All right, so in the previous video, we learned how to determine the energy of our uh, of the subshells within our shells. And we learned that the 1s orbital is the lowest energy, followed by the 2s, right? And these just get single lines because there's only one s orbital in the first shell and one s orbital in the second shell. The 2p subshell has three orbitals, so we have three lines of equal energy followed by 3s, 3p, and the third shell also has a 3d, which has five orbitals. We also said that sometimes an orbital from a higher shell number actually squeezes in between a p and a d orbital. And the first time this happens is the first time our d orbitals show up, okay? Um, and as this video progresses, you're going to see some tricks to remember exactly when um, s orbitals are lower in energy than d's or f's. All right, but for right now, let's go ahead and think about how we can put electrons into this energy diagram, and then we'll see how we can translate that information into uh, a more compact uh, way of representing the electron configuration in these orbitals. Okay, so let's start off by thinking about, let's start really simple. Um, let's say we have lithium. Okay, lithium has an atomic number of three, so we have three electrons, right? So the idea is we want to put these three electrons into our orbitals starting at the lowest energy, okay? When we show electrons in the orbitals, we always show them as arrows, okay? If we show an arrow pointing up, this represents spin up, okay? And the, the explanation for that is beyond the, beyond the scope of this class. But an arrow down means spin down. And just imagine, uh, let's, let's say you have the electron is a sphere, it's a ball. And it can either be rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. One of those directions is spin up, the other direction is spin down, okay? So when we put electrons into these orbitals, we're gonna show them as arrows. The first electron goes in as spin up, and the second electron of the 1s orbital goes in as a partner spin down, okay? Every orbital can hold up to two electrons, but the second electron always has to be a spin partner. Okay, so we have two electrons taken care of from our three from lithium. So our third electron must go into the second shell, into the 2s subshell. And we can show that as an arrow pointing up. So this would be the energy level diagram for lithium. We have two electrons in a 1s orbital, and we have one electron in a 2p orbital. Okay, and the way that we can show this shorthand Right, so you don't have to draw this entire diagram is to write out an electron configuration. Okay, so what we note here is that in our 1s orbital, we have two electrons. In our 2s orbital, we have one electron. This is the electron configuration for lithium. 1s2, 2s1. Two electrons in the 1s orbital one electron in the 2s orbital. So this would be the electron configuration for lithium. Okay, let's move to an atom that's a little bit bigger. Let's say we have nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen has an atomic number of seven, so we have seven electrons. All right, let me erase these and we'll start from the beginning. Okay, so we want to put these seven electrons in, starting at the lowest energy possible. So we put two electrons into the 1s, two electrons into the 2p, that takes care of four electrons, so we have three left. We now reach the first situation where we have uh, orbitals that have equal energy. And whenever you run into a situation where we have multiple lines at the same energy, you put one electron into each orbital first. Okay, so for nitrogen, we put the extra three electrons 
into one orbital at a time, one p orbital at a time. Okay, so we've used all seven right now, and each of the p orbitals of nitrogen have one unpaired electron. The fact that nitrogen has at least one unpaired electron makes it paramagnetic. Okay, a paramagnetic element is one that has at least one unpaired electron. And what this means is that it will be influenced by a, mag by a magnetic field, right? So it'll, it will be drawn towards a magnet. So it's, it's magnetic. Okay, so nitrogen is paramagnetic because it has at least one unpaired electron. It actually has three. Okay, so translating the energy level diagram to an electron configuration, nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Okay, so this is the electron configuration for nitrogen. It corresponds to an energy level diagram that looks like this. And it's the energy level diagram that can help us understand that nitrogen has unpaired electrons, making it paramagnetic. Let's go ahead and try one more element. Let's look at neon. Okay, so neon has 10 electrons. So we want to put these 10 electrons into our orbitals according to the lowest energy state possible. So two electrons into 1s, two electrons into 2s, one, two, three electrons into 2p, so that's seven, and our last three go in and form pairs in the 2p. So the electron configuration for neon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, right? And since neon has all its electrons paired up, this makes it diamagnetic. A diamagnetic element is one that has no unpaired electrons. All the electrons are spin paired, right? And this is a spin pair. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop this video now. And in the next video, what we'll see is how we can use the periodic table to guide us to write out these electron configurations in a way that's much uh, quicker than having to write out the energy diagram every time.